Hello guys, good morning. Uh, I'm glad you are here and I'm glad I'm here. Uh, I would like to speak uh, some technicals for ICT technicals. It will be a very raw thing, but I would like to speak about the each generation of the mobile technology. It's a very uh, gray area. Nobody knows anything about it. They, they say it's, uh, it's dangerous or something like that, but I will not talk about uh, health uh, uh, impact, but the technology and what you can use the 5G in your, uh, in your uh, CD cases. So I prepared this. So uh, I'm Martin Lissi. I came from, from uh, West Hungary, from Europe, from the University of Europe. Uh, I'm teaching at the Telecommunication uh, uh, Institute, and I'm glad I'm, I'm here with you. So, as you see in the history, there is of course a development uh, about the, the end of the 19th century. At the end of the 19th century, they started to use electromagnetic waves for communication, but we can only uh, as you see, spark, spark generate, the generator and with the, with the Morse code. Everybody knows what is the Morse code, yeah? Everybody knows about the Western movies or the war movies. So everybody knows what is it. Uh, I, I, I put the data rate. And as you see, if there is an experienced and fast uh, hand and uh, technician at the end of the, the, the spark generator, he could send 200 words per minute to the distance from the east coast to the west coast in, in, in the American uh, continent. As, as we develop in, 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 the, in the history, we slowly, uh, very slowly as you see, we had uh, two word boards there and then at the 80s they started to centralize somehow the, the mobile technology the amps NMT and the DAX uh, amps was, was in, 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 in America, NMT was in Japan, uh, DAX was in, in Europe. So the, the standards of the mobile technology was very divided uh, by, by the continents. And you only could use your mobile, tech, uh, mobile phone in the, in the uh, city. And you, you were born in the 90s, maybe, <laughs> and uh, they started to uh, recognize that not only the voice, but the data is very important to send because the written word is written forever. You can check it back, you can read your, your SMS again, your emails again. So it could, uh, it's, it has had started to uh, employ much more bandwidth. On, on the system. On the third generation, they started to use basically the IP based connection. So it was not only connected uh, uh, through a base station to the to the um, uh, the service provider a network, SMS network, but it connected directly to the internet, they started to, to employ the internet itself without employing uh, other other technologies. As, uh, as I said, for, uh, I, I forgot what is the, the image to SMS. You remember that? That's a very uh, expensive image sending, but the old men use in Hungary because <laughs> they forgot how, how much it cost. SMS, yes. Uh, I, I, I was uh, I was seeking for a uh, for a flat for, for a new flat, and then I, I met this old guy and I asked uh, pictures about his property, and he started to send MMS. It's like 10 or 15 MMS is arrived, and it's like 1.5 euro per MMS in Hungary. So <laughs> he just spent a lot of money. Because yeah, the, because the MMS is, is, is never used, they they rated its price high, and I don't know why they didn't uh, delete it 
the, the, the technology. And on, in the, on the fourth generation, they created the voice over long term evolution. It's basically uh, voice over uh, the IP technology with the IP uh, benefits. And as you see, there's a Vimax. Uh, Americans started to to uh, experiment with with wide area between networks, no, right. wide area between yeah. networks, employed not only for for voice but for for the data. But of course, it's, it's not the best thing because, as you know, the Wi-Fi is very uh, prone to to the interference. And we arrive for our topic for the fifth generation. As it's not fully developed now, maybe in, in Valencia they, they deploy it fully in, in the bigger cities. But if you are leaving the, the, the bigger cities, you lose, you are losing 5G uh, um, letters from the right upper session of your phone, and it goes back to the uh, fourth generation and, and to the long term evolution technology. So yes, it was uh, the Nulji, as you see, uh, they they experimented with, with a lot of uh, devices. They, uh, they used a very big handheld phone. It was big because that there was a very big uh, accumulator in it to, to, to deploy a very high uh, over because they used frequency modulation or, or, or amplitude modulation. The, Americans use frequency modulation and the axis use the amplitude modulation. As you see, it's, this is the step what we what we did. As the people are telling about when the Neil Armstrong stepped on the moon, we we, we stepped this uh, big jump with the data from the 93 to the, to the 20. For now, as you see, it's uh, 50,000 multiplying from there. It, it means that everybody, if everybody has, has a phone or two phones and everybody wants to watch, uh, uh, for example, uh, um, bird league soccer, it's, it, the, the system will not lie. But if, if somebody tries to do something in the, in the early of the 90s, it, it, it was only for the for the SMS. So they created around the 10th, 2010, the long term evolution. And as you remember, or, or some kind, you grown in it. But I remember we had this uh, bulk of phone with the big uh, black buttons uh, used only for voice and, and SMS. My dad, dad had it, and he had it like for 10 years. It was a Nokia, you know, that never broke. But then the phone started to be more smarter, and it created a, a culture around it. And now we are, we have a computer in, in our in our pockets, and it had to uh, employ the long-term evolution uh, technology. So what were the type fifth generation targets? Let's see. Uh, let's do the death rates as high as possible. They counted, they calculated that it, it, it can go up uh, to the 20, uh, yes, 20 gigabyte per second loop, gigabit per second loop. It will be high capacity for device connectivity, ultra low latency, and high reliability. So if you create a triangle, triangle of uh, applications because there is a few application what wants to use uh, every three uh, is maybe if, if you want to use that uh, uh, whole uh, whole possibility of the fifth generation it will be very uh, expensive for you but if you only want to to watch uh, television on your phone you will be using only the enhanced mobile, mobile broadcast. If you want to operate a, a, a factory, a car factory, or, or want to, to uh, make remote surgery, 
you will need an ultra reliability to prevent lags or, or connection loss. So you will be have a, a duplicated channel. If, if something is happens one, one channel of the communication, the other is, is going to, to uh, operate. The third is the Internet of Things, IoT, everyone knows. Uh, somebody has a course about the LoRa technology. So the LoRa technology is some kind of uh, IoT technology. It's, uh, for example, with the uh, intelligent transport system, every VHQ, we have a small, um, small device inside it. What is uh, sending? messages from time to time <clears throat> for the environment, uh, telling its, uh, its, uh, uh, its information about the, the environment. So, for example, if, if some pedestrian is tapping on, on, the, on the zebra, the car will tell to the other car that let's stop and uh, the other cars will stop too. So, so in the end, we will you will have this autonomous cars without wheel. You can read or you can talk with each other. <clears throat> so that is the Internet of Things. Or maybe you can imagine the weather stations. That can be an IoT thing. Uh, it's sending uh, information about uh, heat degree or, or humidity from time to time. It, it can be one per day. So it can operate for, for 10 or 20 years with one uh, battery. So that is the, the goal here. So these are these three are the fifth generation corner stores. <coughs> with new partners joining into the uh, uh, fifth generator radio uh, standards, we can create a higher possibility of, of uh, potential if we are employing cloud and uh, artificial intelligence, so we can uh, deploy a lot of tasks, a lot of workforce on this new, new network. So a lot of other sectors is interested in 5G. They can create their private network or use the operator spectrum slicing technology. So <clears throat> it's like slicing is like slicing uh, if I only want to use the Internet of Things, ultra reliability, or uh, only want to use the EM, EMB, enhanced mobile broadcast, uh, this means some kind of slicing too. I will talk about it later. <coughs> so the fifth generation means uh, rapid development of uh, industrial applications. We can use it for mobile, multimedia, smart finance. Everybody has uh, built in uh, bank card in its smart smartphones. It's, it's connecting very fast to, the, to your bank. It's how much? One or two seconds, and, and your, your stuff in this case in your shop. I remember in the 2004 uh, five, we had to wait for like a half a minute until the bank uh, made the connection with the terminal. Uh, it made on, 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 on maybe, you know, the dial up internet. It made the dial up uh, connection and then later uh, it paid. Nobody liked it. I remember, but uh, in, in Hungary, nobody liked it when, when we uh, put up our, our cards and the, the lady in the shop said, oh, no, not again, and the, the row was, was very long. But now at the, at the pub or, or some some shops, you just touch your, your phone on the terminal and your things uh, are paid. Interactive HD video, you know, the Netflix or the HBO uh, Premium or the other things, these are the interactive HD video uh, services. Intelligent transportation, as I already talked about it, environmental monitoring, and the I IoT, not only, uh, not only the city, but uh, you, can, you can imagine that we, are, we can use uh, IoT for for the agriculture, for example, uh, a drone can make circles uh, on on the field and drop some of small IoT elements on the on the soil. 
they are making uh, some some uh, data collection about how acidic the soil is or, or what is the day-to-day uh, -day, um, temperature. And then when all of this, uh, when, when the tractor is going with its uh, uh, modulate, um, you know, when, when we are rowing or towing the soil, a magnet can suck up these, these parts from the soil. It's very smart. And then uh, it, it, will be, it will be not uh, um, impacting the environment with, with, with the plastics. So these are, are, are the deployment of the fifth generation. Massive IoT access terminal, uh, multi terminal types, as I already told you, in the city or, or the, the out of the city. Uh, you can wear devices. A lot of you have this smart uh, watch. It can detect your heart rate. Even even if, if you have some diabetes, it can uh, it can count your 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 blood sugar if, if it's connected to your uh, blood flow somehow. Uh, you can employ cloud office games, smart home, virtual reality, traffic, and virtual smart emerging. So we can access a lot of uh, services with the massive IoT access terminal. So I will talk about the new spectrum, what we have to access uh, for using for the fifth generation, <coughs> because all of the spectrum is already uh, used by other services. So we have to uh, put them away from, from there. For example, the uh, <coughs> terrestrial television or some some kind of other uh, services. Massive multiple input, massive uh, multiple output. The MIMO beam forming. If you ever heard it, I will talk to tell talk, tell about a lot of about it. Network slicing. When I want to use or or what frequency want uh, I want to use for what service. <clears throat> dual connectivity and low term evolution coexistent because I I can't do that. Okay, now let's forget the fourth four generation and let's deploy the fifth generation. But I want to uh, develop slowly from the from the one to the other. I, I can't do I, I cannot do only a jump and <coughs> forget the uh, history and. Supporting uh, cloud implementation and edge computing means uh, we can <coughs> we can forget the centralized um, computational and we can put uh, computational <coughs> performance closer to the user to make it to make the system faster on the local levels. So what is the <coughs> what is the electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetic spectrum? Uh, the word first used in optics. And it's infinite points defined in an interval. These are uh, uh, very mathematical things, so you cannot you cannot speak a frequency about pointing it, only about talking about uh, intervals or bandwidth. So the electromagnetic spectrum is about from from the low levels, uh, low frequencies like like uh, nine kilohertzes up to. Uh, 300 uh, uh, mm, have what is the E? I forgot. You remember? Yeah. Because kilohertz, kilohertz, terahertz, petahertz, and exa exahertz. Yeah. Exahertz. Sorry about this. So as you see, the visible light is an electromagnetic wave. So we can say that you, your, your eye. Is, a, is an antenna. It has an antenna for the intensity, and it has an other antenna for the color. So you can, your, your eye can detect the different wavelength of, of the electromagnetic uh, <coughs> wave. It's very. So if uh, there is an electromagnetic thing around us, people want to deploy it. We have to talk about how to how to use it. Who to give the, 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 the spectrum? Because as you see, you were at the beach, yeah? 
and, and you saw a lot of ships are coming and going into the into the port. And they have to speak about who is departing or arriving, because if every ship wants to go to the port at once, there will be a collision. So this is a similar with the spectrum resource. If I want to use the same frequency as your phone uses, there will be a collision and interference and your uh, your connection will, will be lost. And of course, air we, we arrive with the plane. So, and this means money too, because <coughs> The, the countries are, are uh, giving out uh, airtime for the planes or, or water uh, surface time for the ships, and they have to pay their, their the Ryanair, the, the ship company has to pay for that company to use its water. Or, uh, <coughs> and this is the same with the spectrum. Uh, telecommunication companies has to pay a big money for using one uh, interval for 10 years, 15 years or 20 years. <clears throat> so if you want to use this, we would like to manage manage the spectrum. So the wireless telecom systems are using carriers from the frequency spectrum. The frequency spectrum used for telecommunications up to 300 gigahertz. And this is limited by technology and limited by propagation properties. Limited by technology because uh, in the 50s, uh, the transistors uh, started to be, be uh, developed and it, it started to be much cheaper. So everybody can get, would get uh, the Soko radio. So the Eastern European <laughs> know what is the Soko radio and uh, Western, mm, I don't know what radio you, you had at the 50s or, or mother. Or, or father, but definitely in the 50s and the 60s, the because of the transistor is, is getting cheaper and cheaper. It means the frequency was not limited by the technology anymore. We could step up and diff, uh, employ one gigahertz, two gigahertz, three gigahertz, and until we are now here, we can uh, employ 100 gigahertz for point to point uh, connection. And we are we are slowly uh, em emerging to 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 little more and more frequency. <coughs> so it means the frequency spectrum is a limited resource. Spectrum management needed. Spectrum management has an international body that is the ITU, the International Telecommunication Union. They has some uh, recommendation for the world that okay, this frequency is best to use for that. This frequency is best. To Blah, 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 blah. And then the countries or the big powers are saying that no, the frequencies are best for used for the army. That's the first every time. That's the first uh, usage. So the interesting uh, story is about we could uh, detect earthquakes uh, earlier. For example, you 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 remember the tsunami, uh, Fukushima. Do you remember about this? Uh, so, and then they started to talk about let's deploy, let's employ the low frequencies for detecting uh, earthquakes. And then Russia, China, and USA said, uh, let's not because we are using that for something. And they asked, what you are using that? <laughs> so they are maybe they are using for it for submarine communication or or uh, uh, location uh, detection. So. We have the international level, the regional level, and the national level. So the region level, for example, the European Conference of Post and Television Administration is they, they they sit together by year to year, maybe like us, they are making nice presentations about okay, this is the technology now, but what we should change about frequencies, and they can make uh, recommendations too. But with the European Union uh, regulators, uh, they can be more strict. So as Hungary or, or the other member states has to uh, fulfill these recommendations if, if uh, he wants, he wants to, to, to part of the CAFT. 
And then we arrive for the national level. So your nation has a, a bureau, an institute with 100, 200, 300 people who are working with the frequencies. Uh, they are calculating how they could make much more money for the government from the frequencies. They are, uh, they are looking for the spectrum to avoid uh, uh, interference. So there are a lot of cars are going with the, with the, with the antenna in the city and they are looking after uh, unsolicited or pirate uh, radio uh, usage as you know. For example, when the Formula One is in your country, is in Spain too, yeah, of course. I don't know which which uh, which city is in the, in the Formula One in Spain. You don't know? In Valencia? In Valencia. In Valencia, there is Formula One. My friend told me. Wow. So, wow. <laughs> so, you know, there is an area and there is a track inside, and there, there will be four cars uh, around the, the the Formula One area, and they are looking after these uh, um, pilot uh, radios because there used to be people who are going to the, you know, to the fence and make uh, set up a camera and and starts to speak about what is happening there. But of course, the media company already uh, paid for the frequency and paid for the for the for the possibility to to make information about about the Formula One. So it's, it's big money. So it's not like there is a press press badge and I'm, I'm going in. I already had paid for 300 euros or more. My, my company had to pay big money. So that is that is where the the Nick Lauda had his money. Yeah, from from place to now. But. So this is the national level. They had to be a much more strict for for its uh, uh, for their uh, citizens. So they have to apply law. So yeah, I, I remember uh, there was a there was a game when when our teacher because my one of my teacher uh, is a is a member of, of this uh, national level uh, enforcement and we had a we had a, a student game and one student went out and try to make a, a um, pirate radio and the guys from from this national level body find him in 10 minutes you know with, with directional antennas you can easily find anybody and then there's a big bag evidence bag they put everything in this bag uh, made, made a plumb bath on it and it went to the evidence room so you can be uh, find a very high money if you want to use unsolicited the, the frequencies. It's like when you start to make uh, a circle with a jet ski around the, the big ships, you mm, you are mm, immediately uh, pulled out by the by the cops. And after the company buys some uh, mm, intervals of this frequency for five years, 10 years, 20 years, or for billions, of course, uh, they had to employ uh, the frequency band as, as much as, as possible he, he can because the frequency means money. So there is a, 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 a there is a formula where the hertz per dollar is is a is a thing. So frequency allocation table is, for example, looking like this. Hungary is looking like this, and uh, the countries. There are a lot of changes. Uh, uh, of course, it's the uh, United States of America, so uh, the colors are not the same in, in, in Hungary. So, from 9 kilohertz to 300 kilohertz, they already um, employed so from uh, services to services the, the frequency bands. As you see, there is a there are some intervals where two colors are present. That means one is the army, the other is the public or, or the, the company uh, usage. <coughs> and then there are a lot of uh, lot of bands that is uh, dedicated for, for free usage. It's for, for example, Wi-Fi band 
for the CB band, for the camions, you know, or uh, for the amateur radios uh, who, who wants to speak with Australia, he can do it with one or two watts. You only put a, a small antenna, small, for example, six meter antenna, what is horizontally long, so you don't need to put up it vertically, but horizontally long antenna, you can start to speak with the Australian uh, amateur radio uh, users. And they already, they always say that they don't understand why, why are they called amateur uh, radionists? Because they are professionals who can employ this, <laughs> this uh, low frequency source for low, uh, for, uh, for good usage. For example, there was an earthquake in Italy. What, when was it? 15? 2015, when was the earth earthquake in, in, in Italy? You, re you remember? Yeah, so uh, there is a thing in mobile technologies. It's called uh, uh, disruption re re uh, relief. So how the system will will stand up after after an earthquake or something like uh, forest fire, but the Italian network was not uh, standing up. So then the amateur radioists came, and then they started to employ the frequencies to to manage the the risk to this. So this is a, a very good uh, employing of the, the. So they they are they should be called professional radio radio users. So, where is the allocated frequencies for the mobile services? So, if you want to imagine the 5G wants to deploy all of the frequencies because all of the frequencies are good for for anything. But low frequencies are good for wide area, but low data. High frequencies are only good in, in small area, but very high data rates. How are we going to, to employ these frequencies. For example, I have a company, I will buy three frequency band and I will give up, uh, give out for a, for a user from one to one, or maybe well, until you are speaking with your mother, uh, you will get the frequency one, the other user will, will get the frequency two, blah, 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 it's easy. But you, you cannot make any much money from it. So how if, 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 I, if, I'm, if I'm speaking about data rates, I can split up your voice because your voice is going in, in, uh, in data. I can uh, uh, zipping in <laughs> your, your, your voice data, slicing it up, and I can send it in, uh, in bursts. As, it, as you see, one user slices up from time to time, but uh, one frequency can can use uh, eight, uh, so eight user can use one frequency, as, as you see. And of course, the the null frequency has to be used for the system because you want to speak with the phones. But there is a phone. Is it in 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 the reception area? Blah blah blah. So there is always a, a system uh, band. So we arrive to the. Um, data world. What if I'm sending out all of the data uh, uh, in one uh, one batch and everybody can pull out from this batch, from this box, what, what he will, will, will need. The CDMA means that everybody has its key. Uh, your data is, is encrypted with the key and you only can read the data what you have the key for. Do you understand? For example, you only have the, the green uh, slice. The, uh, the, you, you cannot read the other because it's gibberish. You understand? So these are the uh, traditional multiple access methods. Uh, it used to be uh, confusion about uh, access methods and modulation. Modulation is not an access method, and the access method is not a modulation, but a lot of people are confusing from time to time these two uh, uh, things. So, more access method used by the fifth gener uh, generation is the autograph frequency division multiple access, where I using uh, 
carriers so close to each other, they are not going to interfere with each other because they are orthogonally uh, with, the, with the adjacent uh, channel. Maybe I, uh, I call it uh, orthogonality. Let's, if, if you want to be more technical, These are two adjacent uh, it's squares. Squares? Yeah, to describe the orthogonality. Ah, uh, but I just only want to explain why they are not interfering with each other. Yeah. As, as you have a square, yeah, orthogonality. This is orthogonality. No, like you can, they don't interfere with each other because they cannot overlap. Yeah, this is a. Uh, I, I wanted to to show you to see if there are square waves because these look similar. Ah, the square. You want to do mean square waves? Yeah, like that. Ah, <laughs> yeah, but you cannot you cannot use square waves, and and this is in uh, frequency band. So this is uh, amplitude, and this is frequency, and uh, I have one thousand or five thousand or or sixteen thousand of carriers, as you see. Next to each other, but the, uh, the side of, of, of my information is is null here, but the other, the adjacent uh, signal is is the maximum. So this this is what the orthogonality means. Uh, I want to do. Yeah. But you already learned about it. Beam division multiple access, it's much more uh, a physical thing. If, if I can make a phase shifted antennas, uh, I can I can direct uh, beams with uh, phase, shifting, uh, phase shifting antennas. I can make uh, electrical um, beam forming, so I can create a beam division multiple access where I maybe can uh, use same frequencies for the uh, other directions and can follow even as uh, fast things as, as cars with the beam. If, if it has an uh, artificial intelligence that is uh, calculating very, very fast, where, where is the, the user uh, going now? You understand? So this is how I can reuse the boat already paid for uh, uh, frequency. This is how I, I make more money from it. To use uh, access metal. The 5G spectrum is about uh, these frequencies, the low frequency in the middle and the, the high frequencies, but it is uh, expanding more and more as the countries can can uh, clear these frequencies. For example, as I, I, I already told you, the low frequencies are, are good for the wide open areas, um, two kilometers, five kilometers uh, reception area, uh, the middle frequencies are, are good for high rates with, with macrocytes. For example, if I'm putting uh, macrocytes in, 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 the, in the plaza, you know, in the shopping center, I can make service for 500, 1,000 or 1,000 people at once. And the very high frequency is, uh, is good only for a room or for point-to-point -point connection or for this beam uh, division multiple access, as the higher frequency is 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 is, is better to you can you can uh, divert higher frequencies better than the lower frequencies. So as I already told you, you have to refarm the spectrum for the three generation. What it means is that uh, there are some references from the. Uh, institution of the telecommunication and every country tries to to clean that uh, uh, frequency for example from terrestrial uh, uh, television broadcasting they are not creating new uh, um, how they say sorry, sorry, sorry. new ah uh, yeah 
they are not creating new contracts with, with, uh, with companies. They are not giving out the frequencies. Only keep it for one or two years after the other frequencies are coming up uh, together and can deploy more the news of the fifth generation. So, spectrum efficiency, how are we going to use all of the uh, uh, spectrum better? <clears throat> if I only use the long-term evolution, uh, with narrow bands, for example, I, I, I bought 100 megahertz spectrum and only use uh, five bands from the, from the LPS system, you can see that the red area is the union's uh, frequency spectrum, but of course you paid for all of it. It's like a spread, uh, cutting the, 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 the bread with a, with a very bad knife and uh, all of the uh, bread cuts are, are going away. What if I'm using the fifth generation with uh, almost square uh, area, I can make the unused uh, area as, as, as low as possible. And so this, with the same bandwidth, I can deploy much more uh, data bandwidth. <coughs> this is with that, uh, of course, on the Wikipedia, there are a lot of, lot of bands, so and the services are, are, are divided by the, the frequency band. So we already spoke about uh, the new spectrum. We, uh, I will try to speak about the massive MIMO. We only have half an hour, maybe it will be enough. So what is MIMO? Multiple input, multiple output, everybody knows it, yes? So it's about uh, employing a multiple path to to bypass the effect of the, the, the failing. So uh, I don't remember, or I don't know if you already experienced the, you have a frequency modulation, modulated receiver in your car, yes? And you stopped at the red light and the radio started to, starting to be a, a bad receiving, yes? You're, you're, you know? because your car is in, in a fading area, the reception level is very low, and then you start your car and, and move for like a half a meter or one meter away, and the reception is good again. This is because uh, the multiple uh, paths making, uh, so the waves coming from multiple um, paths meeting in a, in a uh, in a bad phase and they are nullifying each other. So the, with the MIMO we can uh, increase spectral efficiency and network coverage. So this is what I tried to talk about. This is the fading effect. As you see, if the uh, waves from, from two source, from two, two uh, different paths are meeting in the, in the 180 phase, they, they are going to, no, not 180, uh, 90, maybe, uh, 180 phase, uh, they are going to move, uh, nullify each other, and if, if your car is in this area, you, you cannot get the new reception. But if I have not only one path, but much more, like the MIMO, I can, uh, I can get a better reception. So this is what I, I, I want to uh, understand about better reception. When the signal to noise ratio is low, the receiver uh, can almost uh, recognize that uh, the information. Uh, maybe I can recognize this about for a, for an O, so it's, it's not going to be a B uh, again. But if I'm, I'm uh, employing my own technology, the signal to noise ratio will be better and the information is going to be uh, better.
<coughs> so yeah, this is what is a phase array. If I'm uh, multiplying the the dipole elements of the antenna, I can make narrower and narrower, narrower uh, beams. And if I put uh, phase shifting for the antennas, I can uh, uh, I can create the beam forming technology. If you understand, you you heard already about phase shifting, electric car tilting when the base station antenna is is uh, standing like this because if you are tilting by physically the snow will uh, gather on it and it will make um, corrosion and, and and heavy weight but you have to put the base station antenna like this vertically but the beam is as you see can see the people uh, on, on the on the on the floor so this is how they they make it this, it means uh, electrical tilting and and the good thing you can do it from home. So the technician looks if if, if one area reception is bad, he's just uh, putting some some programs uh, online, and then he can create uh, modified beams for, for the users. And let's uh, move forward. What if I'm not creating one beam with one antenna, but two different frequencies? Two beams. Uh, with two different frequencies, I can create uh, two beams, and I will, uh, I can, I can follow two uh, distinctive uh, uh, user. <coughs> if the user is closed, there is no need for so narrow beam. So it's good. If, uh, the reception is, is good. Then I can make a wider uh, um, beam. The system can enhance the signal to noise ratio with generating two different paths of signals, same frequency. So it's not only bad that uh, it's not, not a bad thing to, to, to create smooth fading, but it can be good and it, it can be uh, employed for, for tracking the user. Because in the big city environment, there is a lot of surfaces where, where, where the, the high frequencies are, are reflected. Uh, the higher frequencies are reflected from, from surfaces like this. For example, the Wi-Fi network, the big difference between the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi network is that the 5 gigahertz is much more reflective from, from the, from the non-metallic uh, surfaces. So that's why you only can create smaller uh, area reception with 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, but with 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, wi uh, the frequency band is, is wider, so the, the data rate is, is bigger. Too. That's why they, they like to use the uh, 5 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi. And the other thing is, is that in 2010, uh, of course, the, the the device is getting much more cheaper, so it allowed people to get a, a 5 uh, gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi router. Before that, it was very expensive, so this is when, when we talked about the limit by technology, that the, 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 market, is, is, the market cannot consume uh, the frequency because the device is very, very uh, expensive. But if, if the device is getting uh, cheaper, the market can start to consume that uh, the frequency and, and, and employ it for, for things like this. So better NSR means the system can switch to faster data rate. And yeah, this is my more beam forming. So if I'm switching uh, a much more, uh, much higher data rate, it can create uh, that system needs a uh, uh, higher uh, signal to noise ratio. Uh, you already learned it, yeah? So, for example, Frequency, amplitude, 
and I have signal and signal noise ratio. And with uh, UAM, and for example, AM. So you already heard about the uh, phase and amplitude modulation. You can combine them. And if I have this higher data rate, they are on this lower data rate. <laughs> But uh, the 64 uh, amplitude uh, phase modulation demands higher signal to noise ratio or the symbols cannot be uh, recognized again. So this is the, for example, Kuwan, and maybe this is the APSK. So as you see, uh, the symbols are getting much closer together, and the system, the receiver, cannot uh, take difference between those if there is a big noise. And the noise on the, on the phase diagram is like this. And it could happen that the symbol can go to the other area. Do you understand? So this is when I speak about the higher data rate uh, means higher uh, signal to noise ratio demanding. The following. The network slicing is, is something what you have to employ or employ in your in your uh, entrepreneurial case study because this means that uh, the fifth generation will uh, replace the LTE do any uh, yeah mm. if any, anyone remember the first place there was only uh, grayscale televisions yeah but when they wanted to create a, a color television they just couldn't uh, make a signal only colors, but they had to transmit the signal of the intensity for, for the TVs, what is grayscale. So this is the grayscale television. This is maybe That's all. And I want to maybe RGB. Red, green, blue. Let's send this to the grayscale. And he will say, what is this? I cannot recognize the RGB. So they have to they have to create uh, intensity uh, information and two color uh, information. So the grayscale television only employed the intensity. And if there, there were a color television, uh, it, it, uh, it accepted all, all the three information and, and makes uh, made color information for your eyes. So this is the same, the similar thing in the fifth generation, but we, we cannot just shut down the LTE service because uh, billions of people have to have to drop their phone. I think half of you don't have uh, yet fifth generation phones yet, yes? Because it's a bit expensive. So it's, it's called small rollout, uh, small uh, transformation. Connecting with fifth generation compatible equipment to a dual connectivity network, you can enjoy two potential two service. So, where is only LTE is, uh, is present, we can create a fifth generation interface for the for the for your user device. But if I'm already deployed somewhere in the fifth generation, your your smart very very smart phone can use uh, the fifth generation or if your if your phone is only good for the LTE he can use the LTE service we talked about how 
do outro lado. Now, ah, we will talk about network size in the end. Oh, I have 15 minutes, okay. Support for cloud implementation and computing. The goal is to provide low latency. Uh, yeah, as you see, there is a core maybe in, in, in the in Madrid, very far away. The information has to go there, some calculations made on it, and come back. And this means even if it's going by the, the speed of light, it means uh, uh, it could mean milliseconds because some calculation is, is takes time there. But if I'm talking with somebody from the university, from, with, uh, from, from to the other uh, room, maybe there will be a local core or a, 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 a computa computational uh, unit closer to the, to the user, uh, the latency can be low. So this is what edge cloud means. That, okay, let's move away from the core, closer to the to the uh, base station, to the user. So the so the data can be calculated much more faster because it's it's uh, closer to the to the user. It means distributed computing, and this is how it looks. So we are connected, and maybe speaking. With, uh, with phone, then it, it will use the edge node. But uh, if you are connecting and speaking in the same area with, with your friend, it may not uh, go deeper than the base station because maybe the base station itself has a connection unit. And this is how it looks. So this was the classical distributed, you know. OSI levels, you already learned about it? Yeah. So these are the OSI levels uh, topology. Uh, the, uh, the classical distributed networks, the, the, the core, the computational thing is, is very deep inside the architecture. So I'm connecting through the radio frequency level and my information going through the multiple layers. It's calculated and sent back to me or, or for, the, for the other party. But on the uh, low latency architecture, maybe if I'm close, maybe we are we are in the same city, the computational uh, over can be close to us, so the uh, data rate can be high and and the latency can be low. So yeah, this was the edge computing. What about the network slicing? Bit more about this because this means that this this is the thing what you you could use in your case study. Maybe one or two slides is enough. One one slide about yeah we will use the fifth generator fifth generation uh, based on uh, network slicing and every case study has its uh, its possibility to use the fifth generation. Diverse and same requirements latency throughput capacity available. So what is latency? It's a, let's, let's do things very fast. For example, mission critical application, when, when the manufacturing process is very fast and the machines are, are uh, communicating with each other, uh, not broadband, it's a small, so it's, a, it's a, not a big information, but it's maybe, you are done? Yes, I'm, I'm done. And it has to be very, very fast uh, information exchange. Throughput. Is uh, Netflix uh, capacity is, is when when somebody is deploying uh, or building a, a music music concert and there will be ten thousand people and everybody uh, wants to uh, you know put up the camera and and uh, makes uh, a live video about it and then everybody wants to make connected and uh, I'm I'm at the concert and I don't want to enjoy this but I want to show that. <laughs> I am in the concert. So it could happen that 1,000 people wants to use uh, the system at once. So that means if the capacity is high, if the system's capacity is high, it can bear that, that much uh, availability. So when I'm calling the uh, emergency line and, and I, I want to start to, okay, I, I'm hit by a car and then the connection lost, 
means the availability is less than that, even for, for emergency. As you know, if you are pressing your uh, 112, yeah, in European uh, emergency uh, numbers, the phone has its uh, priority. So uh, the, the provider has to do anything to keep up that connection that you made with the, with the uh, emergency line. This means availability. Oh. So what is network slicing? Much more deeper. Uh, you want to build logs, for example, virtual mobile operator, service layer, uh, network function. You want to define what, what you want to use the network. Uh, and you want to employ infrastructure layer, radio access network, transport network, core network, you know, we so talk about the, the computational power at the core and the radio access network when your, your phone is connecting to the system. So we have a lot of uh, building blocks in the system and there will be, uh, it's like a musician orchestrator who will control all the blocks and give, giving them out for your service. So not everybody, Maybe not everybody needs the core network because, for example, for the um, uh, something uh, local, you only need the radio access network. Uh, for example, a local music uh, thing, you only need the radio access network, so they only give you out that block. And this is how it looks. So the fifth generation uh, can control a lot of uh, different frequency bands. And of course, we have time, it's passing very fast. And the orchid selector can decide that which block is going to which uh, service. For example, if the frequency is lower, that means I can uh, use it for, for, for example, agricultural uh, goals. For example, controlling uh, a drone, what is Making uh, mm, <coughs> making fumes. What, what, what is this called when they are uh, sprinkling uh, the, the, the plants? And if the frequencies are higher, it's, it's more local, but it's more broader. So the orchestrator will choose which block is going to which service. What what is good for what? Of course, there will be uh, rules. Uh, what, what a, a person or a human uh, decided, but the orchestrator is an uh, artificial intelligent uh, computer, what is analyzing the <coughs> system, analyzing the connection. Do I need to keep, do I need to keep uh, this frequency? No, uh, so I'm, I'm getting back these frequencies, maybe other service needs all the frequencies uh, or at once, for example, in an earthquake or, or, or some uh, um, emergency, then I will deploy all the frequencies to, to that uh, purpose. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so this is a one example of how we are going to neglect the core and maybe we can use only the local low latency service to give out for the user equipment. Uh, for example, uh, if you are going to your, your workplace and you are getting a phone, but it's only working in, in, in the factory. So, so the factory or, or the company can create its own uh, fifth generation mobile uh, <coughs> uh, system inside. And you can uh, neglect the, the, the outer world. So, uh, so this way, I, uh, he can uh, he can keep up the good accessibility, the wideband, the the, the low latency in, inside the factory. Because maybe it's a, it's an iron melting factory, and it could happen that somebody uh, getting hurt, and then they they have an own uh, poly, police, <laughs> they have have an own uh, fire firemen there, so they have to respond fast. So we uh, make over the old uh, fifth generation thing. We have several minutes. So I created some takeaways for the, each of the ECS. Uh, 
the entrepreneurial creativity groups. Uh, I, I saw that the first and the seven is similar by the by the means of the fifth generation. It's a five a generation in food industry and supply chain. In the second, uh, I choose intelligent government control system with 5G IoT, for example. The role of 5G for digital healthcare against COVID-19 pandemic is for the ACS3. Uh, 3D printing for fifth generation system. So uh, there will be a, a group who will not employ uh, fifth generation, but can do for the fifth generation uh, uh, technology. Assistive technology supported by fifth, uh, fifth generation is for the blind or the hearing disorder. And fast and excessive data acquisition on the web for aiding filtering option for for filtering uh, uh, fake news. So what is the 5G uh, opportunity in the, in the food chain and the food industry? The, so the fifth generation can drastically improve safety protocols to the food industry supply chain. For example, uh, of course, on every box of food, there is a RFID tag. If you are changing that, that for, for an uh, IoT tag, I can follow the uh, box of food from the factory to the user and some, something happens, it was bad, I can follow back uh, the, the, uh, the source of the problem, why, why the food caused me diarrhea. So this, this is the thing that we should uh, think about. Uh, factories can deploy fifth generation network for use on conveyor system machines and sensors. We already talked about this is a, a, a fast uh, fast information exchanging uh, thing. Uh, that is an interesting uh, thing too. They are putting uh, IoT small IoT tags in the grain too to to follow uh, from the silo to the factory. So if something happens and Maybe they are detecting uh, uh, fungi, you know, the, so they are detecting because it, it got wet and the fungi started to eat the grain. They can filter uh, not the whole uh, wagon of, of uh, uh, grain has to be put out, but you can localize the, the, the bad area. So intelligent government control system with uh, 3G IoT. Um, I'm not part of the of the um, uh, these work groups, so I, I don't really know what you are working on. So I was just guessing what should be the, the best to use by the means of the generation. So I just uh, found some articles about business or governance framework and human resource management in smart cities through uh, IoT and 5G technology. I don't know which group is doing this, but Maybe this is a similar thing you can you can employ, and I have some uh, articles. If you want, uh, I can share them with you. The fifth, fifth generation can transform government operation, providing access to real-time information from any device anywhere, especially for field workers such as uh, first responders, food and agriculture inspector, military personnel. So it's like. We already talked about how a factory would make its own uh, uh, network. A city, uh, a smart city, can make the, sim uh, the similar uh, own network with co with the direct connection for the for the imagers' life uh, and with the uh, aiding by the edge. So the role of the fifth generation for digital healthcare against COVID-19 pandemic, uh, 5G systems can uh, and 5G enable uh, e-health solution can really close nurses and provide instructional services protecting the medical personnel from infection. Uh, for example, in Hungary, uh, they said that if you are sick, don't go to the doctor. <laughs> only, to, only, only call them. And if you want to see the doctor, uh, the first question was, uh, what is your uh, Problem and if I'm coughing and, and, and such as, and then he said, okay, don't come here because if yeah, if <laughs> if you if you are infecting the, the the doctor, you are you are doing the the worst thing. So the priority 
in, 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 in every area. The priority, the priority is to save the, the, the emergency personnel. For example, uh, in some cases, uh, the paramedic needs a, a protection against, uh, for, for example, there, there is a riot and the paramedic cannot go into the riot because he gets beaten up. So the police have to uh, aid the, the paramedic uh, for reaching um, somebody who is hurt. Uh, not similar, but uh, not same, but similar to extreme use case like telesurgery is already a, a thing from, from uh, for example, from uh, Swiss, Switzerland. Anybody can get uh, a surgery in, in other country with the, with the VR uh, Googles and the robot cars. And it is aided by the fifth generation. Okay, the 3D printing was the other way. So the 3D printing can help for the fifth generation systems. For example, creating uh, antennas like like this fractal monopole antenna and this uh, horn antenna. So this could mean the cheaper production uh, elements can can uh, can make the, the market access more into the fifth generation devices. Assistive technology supported by fifth generation means that uh, if a uh, blind or deaf people wants to commute because of course they have a, a right to work and in some cases in some country they are they are they are uh, they just cannot live the same uh, life as you are because the the environment is not accessible to them the best example is the steps if, if a wheelchair uh, person cannot get up to to, the, to to his workplace he cannot get the money so he, uh, mm, his rights are, are, are not the same as, as your rights. So there are a lot of uh, things you can use by the fifth generation. For example, sound assistance for visually impaired and visual assistance for, for uh, hearing impaired persons. For example, he can see what is next to the corner, so he will not step into the manhole that is open, for example. Yeah. <clears throat> Fast and accessing, uh, extensive data acquisition on the web for aiding different options. It was a harder task to, to find something for the for the fake news, but of course with the <clears throat> with the faster uh, computational power and uh, with the higher data rates, you can make faster sweep on the internet for 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 creating the big data uh, database. And then a person or the uh, artificial, artificial intelligence can can make uh, statistical data or some some uh, uh, program for for make filters for the fake news. Um, because yes, um, resource intensive intensive means it, it it is consuming a lot of power, like yeah, like uh, like the the, the crypto. Valuts, you know how they're working with uh, with uh, with this resource intensive. They say the Bitcoin is a, a very high energy uh, consuming thing, so they they want to switch to the Ethereum, what is a proof of stake or what? I don't really know. So there is a proof of work and proof of uh, stake, and the proof of work is uh, eating GPU up, and the GPU modules are eating 50, 50, uh, 50 watts or, or more each. So that's why when people are started to buy these rigs at home and they plug, plugged in, uh, into the plastic plug and started to generating money for themselves. But that means that somewhere uh, an oil power factory has to put more, more oil to, the, to, to generate uh, power for you. So this is what resource intensive algorithm means. Okay, so thank you for your attention. Uh, if any group is